morning and thank you for joining us. This is Money Line with Nancy and I am Nancy Naji. Uh, today we will uh, still uh, be talking about the transition that will happen in a few uh, days time but we'll be looking at the markets and the transition uh, what is in stock for the markets uh, in a few days time even as we uh, go on don't uh, forget that uh, during the campaign uh, season uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu did uh, come up with some uh, reforms that he said he will be undertaking in just a few days time he will be sworn in so what uh, will uh, the markets look like what kind of reforms uh, are we expecting from him that will in turn impact the markets be it for positive or for a negative but we hope that there will be positive reforms that would uh, not just go a long way in terms of uh, developing the markets but also growing the markets my guest will be joining me uh, shortly to take a look at uh, that but let's get started with our business uh, news but don't forget to join us on all our socials uh, you can connect with us as the handles uh, will be scrolling on the screen let's All right, welcome back to the program. My guest is joining me uh, right now virtually. He is Olatunde Amolek, but the immediate past uh, president of uh, the Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers. He's also the managing director at Ostevin Asset Management Limited. Uh, Mr. Amolek, good to see you and welcome to the program. Uh, good to see you, uh, Nancy. Uh, thanks for having me. Fantastic. Good to have you. Now, let's get mm -hmm. uh, started. Uh, the uh, swearing-in uh, ceremony will be in just a few days. I would like to know what your feelings are uh, towards the market, regarding the market, especially as the transition approaches. Are you bullish or you are hawkish or you're neutral? Uh you know, personally, I'm I'm not allowed to have uh, express an opinion or an emotion regarding that. But uh, if you say regarding the markets, typically, uh, you know, uh, impact, empirical research has shown that um, every transition of governments uh, normally en engenders uh, good feelings amongst the people, uh, the feelings of positivity, positive change coming. So. Um, investors typically re react to that so um, uh, my expectation is that the investors will be coming to the market with a with a fresher high and uh, with more optimism uh, as we transition to a new government so uh, i will say that um, i'm positive that this um, transition by itself will be a positive move for the market Okay, Mr. Amolegbe, what I, I was actually asking was not your feeling towards this transition <laughs> about the election <laughs> results. <laughs> what I actually wanted That's to true. know is either you're mm -hmm. bullish, hawkish, or you're a bit neutral on the market, taking a look at what, you know, what, what your sentiments are to regarding the markets as we transition. So that was actually uh, my question. I hope, I hope you're getting it now. Yes, I, I, I got it now. Um, if you put it that way, I'm positive. Um, um, I will say I'm, I'm actually bullish, really, uh, given where we're coming from. Uh, if you put together uh, the manifestos of uh, the incoming president and his antecedents, uh, there's absolutely every reason for uh, for one to be bullish as to uh, what uh, what we're looking to towards uh, in the in the um, in the new in the new government and. Uh, what their likely, what their possible policies is likely to engender for the market. So, I will say that um, I'm bullish. I, I'm also, I'm also perceiving that in the way the uh, investors have been reacting in the market in the last few days. So, all in all, uh, everything seems to be looking good. So, you know, uh, so I will say uh, on the balance, on, on the balance of things, I'm bullish at the moment. Okay. This this mm -hmm. bullishness uh, sentiment which you have, uh, is that yeah. also uh, what your colleagues feel like? Is that how uh, your colleagues and how the markets generally are feeling like as we transit in just a few days? 
if you if you read the market data in the last few days, uh, you could you could um, you could guess the feeling, the general feeling of the uh, of of market operators and uh, investors alike. Because I mean, I was looking at some of the some of the data you show from um, um, African countries and some of the other European and Asian markets in the last uh, in the last few days, and I see that most of them are are, are in the red. Uh, but if you look at the Nigeria market in the last few days, we've actually been in the green, and uh, we, we, we've been we've been uh, green consistently for the last uh, for the last few days, which shows that you know, despite the fact that you know the global economy isn't doing as well, uh, the um, the feeling and the attitude in Nigeria seems to be a little bit different, and I I would like to that that is uh, as a result of the transition we're 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 looking towards. So you know. Other than other factors that you could uh, you could look at globally, so I mean um, I I am positive, uh, and I feel that my uh, my colleagues the other operators are also positive, and the investors seems to be reflecting that in the way they are they are pricing shares and equities in the marketplace. I mean, and that's why we're green. How much how much of of that greenness is also coming mm -hmm. from the fact that we are just also winding down an earnings season and uh, many companies quoted on the exchange did come up with good revenue translating into good profits translating also into a good dividend payouts seemingly uh, to investors so how much of this bullish mood is also being hinged on that in terms of uh, the the positive closes that we've seen in a few days concerning the stock market. Well, I, I would I would not rule out totally uh, the positive earnings report and the declaration of dividends as a contributory factor to the uh, to the positive sentiments we are seeing in the market right now. Uh, but you, you will agree with me that um, the stock market is a, is a, is a, is a forward pricing mechanism, so to say. So I will say that a significant portion. Of the positive uh, of the of the sentiment from uh, positive corporate announcements have probably already been factored. So what we are probably seeing now is optimism towards the future more than what has already passed. All right, um, a lot of those companies you've also mentioned have also come come, come out with first good uh, first quarter earnings, very good first quarter earnings. The expectation is that that will continue into the near future, and that is why we are you know, we're seeing the positive sentiments we're seeing at the moment. So uh, given that, you know, this, the stock market tends to look forward uh, as different from fact, as different from factoring the uh, what has already passed, uh, I, I think a, a bulk of what we're seeing in the uh, uh, in the market right now is is coming from, you know, what we're expecting rather than what has passed. Okay. Um, I, I appreciate your your positive outlook uh, for the market, but uh, you know it's it's a market, and anything can happen. A, a policy, a pronouncement can actually mm -hmm. jolt the market in a, in any way. So, if I really want to get your cautious mm -hmm. sentiment, which segment of the market do you think that investors should be cautious about as we transition? I hope you understand my, my, my question. Which session, which segment of the market should we be cautious mm -hmm. about? And which segment of the market okay. do we also, should we also mm -hmm. look at that bright things are going to be for that segment? I hope you understand what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I get you to an, to an extent. Um, I, you know, the, the new the government we're we seeing and uh, from their manifesto are probably going to fo focus on infrastructure. Uh, the the outgoing, outgoing government have done quite a bit of that. Uh, we think that the, in, the incoming government will also focus on developing infrastructure because at the end of the day, uh, you need to develop infrastructure before you can talk about transitioning from consumption to production. So um, as a stockbroker, I, I will. Um, I will continue to be bullish on 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 sectors around industrial goods, around um, construction, around um, 
uh, those those businesses that has to do with developing infrastructure. Uh, we also know, of course, that um, you know Nigeria is a huge market for telephones. So uh, that the growth in that particular sector is not expected to slow down anytime from now. Uh, the, the the banking industry also continue to show, show 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 resilience. I, you know, I was mentioning to someone that um, if you look at what our banks have done uh, recently, a lot of them have had to take significant hits from uh, having to take rights off from uh, what is happening in Ghana. And despite that, most of them has uh, came up with very good uh, numbers in the year and the year end results and declared even dividends that are better than what they declared last year. That for me shows resilience in that sector. That shows a sector that is growing despite all the challenges that are that are available in the market. Uh, regarding caution, um, uh, we are still grappling. Obviously, we are still grappling with the issues of um, inflation. We are still grappling with. Uh, you know the unstable um, uh, exchange rate policy. So I, I will say those industries that lean heavily on uh, on uh, consumer consumer goods uh, that uh, you know that finds it difficult to pass along um, pass along the, you know inflation cost to their customers, uh, then those ones might might continue to struggle on the short run uh, until we actually start seeing the policies that the new government is going to come up. Come up with to tackle those issues of inflation and uh, and foreign exchange issues. Uh, so I will say, uh, on the cautious side, uh, I will be cautious about um, uh, you know uh, consumer good companies. You know, uh, you know that really are not uh, able to really pass on the full cost of inflation and exchanges issues to to their customers. Hmm. Okay, so. Uh, from that answer, uh, you definitely uh, un understood my question. Now, le let's take a look at what you've just said in terms of the, the segments of the market where you are optimistic about industrial goods. Isn't it? Did I, did I, did I get mm -hmm. you well? Do, yes. Do you think? Yes. yes. Do you think that inflation will not will not pass through those segments of the market also? And how will Inflation passed through because inflation is in, impacting on e everyone as, as we speak uh, right now. For some segments of the market, like consumer goods, which you're talking about, a lot of the, the companies there have increased the prices of, of their products and all of that. So, based on that, your optimism for industrial goods and the other segments which you talked about, do you think they are not suffering inflation too? If you think so, how is inflation passing through? Okay, now the industrial. All the sectors are, are suffering the impact of inflation. I mean, that is the way it works. Um, it's just that, you know, by, by the structure of each economy, uh, some, some industries and some businesses are able to handle the impact of inflation better, maybe, maybe because of the focus of government or, or by, the, by just the nature of the product that they sell. All right, so for instance, uh, if I mention um, industrial groups, let's say, Let's use cement in you know, as an example. All right. I mean, inflation has, has impacted uh, has inspected that um, that sector, uh, but they are able to pass on the impact of inflation better because they are able to increase their product, and despite in, uh, in, increase the price of their product, and despite increasing the price of their product, um, we are not seeing that increase in price impacting volume that much. All right, from the figures we're seeing, as different from you know maybe the consumer goods where a significant increase in prices could actually impact impact the, the volumes that the, com the companies are able to push out, which could ultimately imp impact their their total revenue and of course their profits at the end of the day. So, you know, uh, industries and in, uh, that that are sell products that uh, that have um, essentially inelastic demand. I mean, we're still in a growing economy. Uh, we've mentioned that the need for in infrastructure is, is enormous in this country. So even if the prices of, of, of cement, for instance, were to rise, uh, you, you know, that, that really won't stop people from continuing to build and continue to uh, continue to build and continue to develop infrastructure. So, I mean, so it depends on the industry, it depends on the products. 
uh, and then you know the the willingness of the markets to absorb the the cost of inflation for those products uh. You know, part of also why I asked that question, and I like that you brought in the consumer goods segment of it, because there's also a major player. And for the purpose of this interview, I need to call names so that our, our viewers would understand. We're talking companies now that are listed, quoted on the exchange. Unilever, for example, I think in March, uh, did uh, say that it was stopping the production of popular brands that Nigeria, Nigerians are used to, home care brands as well as skincare brands. The popular Omo, for example, Lux, and uh, which other one? Sunlight. So why I'm bringing this up is that in case Nigerians go to those uh, to the markets and they are looking for those products, Unilever says that it is stopping the production of those products. And it said that in uh, March, in a bid, perhaps naira devaluation, and some of those challenges that we're talking about, inflation, eating into the bottom line, Unilever says that it wants Absolutely. to, uh, you know, uh, re-strategize, remodel its uh, uh, business to uh, mm -hmm. sustain profitability. So for that case, for Unilever, for example, and perhaps for even other consumer goods products, uh, uh, companies, mm -hmm. what are the risks? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. Um, of course, the risk is because of some of the things we've mentioned, you know, some of the macroeconomic risk are some of the things, yeah, forex issues, inflation issues, interest rates issues and then you have a situation where you know uh you know con consumers now start trading down all right when you when they cannot um uh, af af afford the, the the price increases on some of these products that this some of these companies produce our consumers could very well start trading down and the moment they start doing that then you are now seeing a situation where you know, volume starts, uh, starts to starts to do. So, uh, you know, it, it takes for some okay. of these companies to be to really be innovative in order to be able to okay. remain um, remain relevant in the marketplace. Okay, Mr. Amolek, but let, let's quickly take a break. And when we return from the break, we'll continue this conversation. But as we take a break, we're going right now uh, for a live broadcast. But don't fret, we'll bring you back this interview. Here is a new and refreshing offer for our esteemed audience across the globe. The new AIT Cloud TV is an online streaming service that offers you attractive opportunities to view our rich, exciting, and entertaining programs anytime, anywhere. AIT Cloud TV is available on the web on www.ait.app, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Roku, and Android TV. You can also download the mobile app from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Simply connect to the internet, download the app, register, and watch live or catch up on unlimited hours of exciting shows. AIT Cloud TV, TV on the go. Mr. Amalekbe, thank you uh, for still uh, joining us. Um, let, let's quickly now take a look at uh, some of uh, the... Is Mr. Bolegba still there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, okay. Uh, fantastic to still have you uh, there. How much attention do you think that the markets will receive uh, from the president-elect now? How much attention do you think that the categories of markets... I'm not talking about only capital market now, perhaps the fixed income market and all of that. How much attention will you think that it will receive from the president-elect when he becomes president? Then the second part of my question is that do you think his administration will understand the importance, the significance of markets, the significance of the capital market, for example, in terms of capital raising? He will be a president. In fact, my guest said it on the program uh, on Monday that this is the worst year to be a president. <laughs> Some have actually also said that when... He, he comes in, he will still borrow money because there is no money anywhere. You know, so there's no magic about that. He will borrow perhaps to sustain mm -hmm. himself first before he comes up with innovative uh, 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 ways uh, to get money. So, but what do you think in the scope of all of this? You know, the market has a way of, um, of, of putting a measure to, to a person. 
And I think that this, the capital market has a very good measure of, of the president, president-elect already. Uh, the, the market knows his antecedents, what he's done, you know, while he was governor and, um, you know, what his predecessors also have done consequently. Uh, so we know that he's a pro-market pro person. We know that, you know, uh, even while he was governor of Lagos, you know, in various, you know, uh, market positive initiatives came from from his from his cabinet. So we expect for him to, uh, you know, to be pro market on a general basis. Now, as you have mentioned, obviously, you know, um, he's going to need to finance his uh, his, his, his his programs and um, his initiatives and his policies. And uh, you know, it's not like you know uh, the predecessor is leaving a, a portfolio of uh, money for him to ex execute that. So. The expectation is that he will lean on various sources of revenue to be able to uh, to be able to um, you know execute those policies. We expect that he he, he looks positively at the at the uh, at the market in order to do that. Um, you know, and uh, he has very good understanding of, of of how to go about that and the capacity of the market to assist in um, in in helping to raise the rec required uh, funding for most of these programs. So, uh, and if we look at also uh, most of the people that are that are around him, at least the few people that we know that are around him, uh, most of them are, are pro-market people. Some of them are even, you know, were even players in this uh, market before uh, they went into government. So uh, we're not expecting them to change their color. We expect them to still, um, uh, be continue to be pro market. Uh, one of the things we as market operators expect to happen very quickly uh, is is the is the acceleration of the pro uh, of the, the uh, privatization program that seems to have been stalled. Uh, we know hands off a lot of this, uh, you know, uh, public public companies bring them to the market, sell them to the public, raise the rent, require revenue. And you know, see the efficiencies that come from uh, from from them being run by private uh, by private enterprise. So uh, we expect that to happen very quickly. Uh, I also suspect that you know um, there will be increased you know capital raising from the fixed income from the fixed income uh, end of the market uh, at least on the short to the medium run uh, before that policy is not coming to improve uh, government revenue. So. The expectation is that the equities market uh, and it will would benefit from privatization, while we also see uh, increase, you know, entry by government into the fixed income market. Okay, uh, before I come to fixed income market, because we have about five minutes to the end, what, you 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 were the immediate past president of uh, the Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers. I'm actually curious to know uh, what the association or the body is doing uh, to bring in new blood, to bring in, uh, you know, the young people uh, to begin to invest in the capital uh, market. I asked that question for, uh, I also asked the same question from SEC a few months ago, but as an operator, are you also worried that the market is aging or even aged as it were? And uh, what are you people gonna do to bring in freshness? young people, Nigeria's demography made up of young uh, people. What are you people going to do? Do you think that this new wave, uh, the new uh, government in, uh, that will be in place in a few days' time, what can you also do uh, with them to bring this kind of newness into the market? Uh, in truth, you know, we've, um, we've seen an increase in participation by younger people in the market recently. Uh, I will, and by recently, I mean in the last few years, um, with the transitioning of the market itself from the physical, you know, uh, paper market to, you know, to the electronic market, you know, uh, we're seeing more of them being able to access the market via their phones uh, and other devices. Uh, also, you know, uh, we see that we know that there is a transition period. We know that. Uh, the young or the the younger that tends to be um, uh, they tend to be um, you know I would say impatient when it comes to income. Uh, so you know you see most of them you know firstly tending towards um, 
non-traditional investment sources, you know, and you know what I mean by non-traditional investment sources. Yes. With time, they, with time, they are realizing that those uh, non-traditional investment sources are, are, are just too risky. Uh, some of them are finding themselves living, losing the, uh, the small savings they have, and they are now taking a look at the uh, the stock market, the fixed income market, to say, okay, look, is this, is this a place where I can I can build, you know, I can build long long term accumulation to be able to exec, uh, execute some of the projects I might have in mind. So. Gradually, we are seeing more of them coming in. Uh, the advent of these digital platforms that also provide um, access to markets, not only in Nigeria, but in foreign markets is also helping. Uh, because, you know, it, it means that, you know, uh, it's meeting the youth where they are. So even uh, we, have, we have lots of Nigerian youths that are not necessarily living in Nigeria, but we like to not only invest in Nigerian market, but in global markets. So, uh, the admission of the digital, digital platforms by SEC recently uh, is also helping to, you know, uh, serve as a calling card to some of the uh, some of our youths to, you know, to start to participate in the marketplace. On the CIS side, you know, uh, as, I, as I mentioned in your, on your program earlier, uh, we've also transi transitioned from um, bringing in young professionals into our into, uh, into our fold. Uh, by having them do physical exams. So our examinations, for instance, now are also, are also fully digital. Uh, so, you know, irrespective of where you are in the world, uh, you could take your exams and qualify as a, as, a, as a stockbroker in Nigeria. So, you know, a lot of these changes are coming in and uh, I, I think that, you know, we'll, uh, we'll start feeling those impacts, the impact of those changes uh, significantly in the next few years. Okay. I want to say thank you very much for joining me on the show. Uh, today, let's do this again sometime. Perhaps when the president elect is inaugurated and we'll begin to count down to 100 days, let's see uh, what will happen. But from what you've said, markets are really hopeful and uh, optimistic that as a pro market person, uh, good things will come to the marketplace. So, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Molegbe, for joining us today. Thank you, Nancy. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. I've been uh, uh, speaking with uh, the immediate uh, past uh, president of uh, the uh, Chartered Institute of Stock uh, Brokers, Latsudia uh, Molek, where we've been speaking about the markets and uh, what is expected, at least in the next uh, few uh, days or few weeks, as the president-elect is inaugurated. That's the much we can take on today's edition of the program. Thank you for your company, as always. Be the best you can be, but the change that you want to see. I am Nancy Naji. Bye now. Thank you.